The topic of Strongest Trainer has been hotly contested for a long time. To many old school fans, it will always be Red. In the anime, it's Leon. Or maybe Tobias. But in the hearts of many Pokemon fans, the strongest trainer in Sinnoh may very well be the strongest in the world. Today, we're going to break down what makes the Sinnoh champion so threatening and why in the remake she's better than ever before. Good morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Cynthia has always been a fan favorite champion for many Pokemon fans. I think due mostly to the fact that everyone can exchange the same horrific stories of having to fight against her Garchomp as a kid. And in a way, it warms my heart to know that this generation of youngsters will go through the exact same trauma. Except, maybe even worse. Now yes, the difficulty level of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl has been a topic of conversation among many fans, the forced EXP share and the effects of affection being cranked up to 11 certainly make this conversation less black and white than it normally would be. Holy crap, was that a mama flippin' Unova reference? Yes it was, I can confirm that the remakes will come out within the next 10 years, you're welcome. But if there's one thing I can certainly applaud Ilka for, it's that they massively buffed the notable NPCs to account for how much easier it is for the player to raise a good team of Pokemon. This was actually something that I had criticized both Oras and Let's Go for, so I'm very happy to say that they at least made an effort to even things out the best they could. And Cynthia is no exception, so today I'm dedicating the video just to her. Let's take a look at the changes they made from Cynthia's original team to her current team. First up is her lead, Spirit Tomb. Silverwind is replaced by Shadow Ball, which admittedly I don't think is the greatest change in the world. Yes, it is another stab move, but very rarely will there be a situation where Shadow Ball can do more damage than Dark Pulse, which she already has, and Ghost doesn't cover anything that Dark already doesn't. Silverwind isn't a great move by any means, but just the threat of it potentially boosting all of its stats is something. I get the feeling they made this change just so Spirit Tomb could do some damage to Fairy type, since that's its only weakness in the remakes. Embargo is removed entirely in Generation 8, so it gets replaced with Sucker Punch, which may assist in getting Spirit Tomb a kill in a low HP situation. It's definitely situational, but anything is better than Embargo in a lead Pokemon, since you can simply switch out to negate the effect. It no longer has perfect IVs in its HP stat, but it is fully EV trained in both HP and Special Attack. It also now holds a Citrus Berry, whereas before it held nothing. Overall, Spirit Tomb is mostly the same, not amazing, but slightly more threatening in some aspects. Cynthia's second Pokemon is Rose Raid. Shadow Legends. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Rose Raid keeps the exact same first three moves. Energy Ball, Sludge Bomb, and Shadow Ball, but replaces Extra Sensory with Dazzling Gleam. This is probably the least significant change to Cynthia's moveset. While Dazzling Gleam does cover more types than Extra Sensory, none of them are really direct threats to Rose Raid, except maybe Dragon, so it's a slight buff if you're trying to fight her with a Garchomp on your team. This Rose Raid is EV trained in Special Attack and Speed, and has perfect IVs in everything except Attack, which isn't relevant given its moveset. It also holds an Expert Belt now, which is the biggest change from before. Cynthia's Gastron loses Muddy Water for Scald, and I think this is a pretty major upgrade. Sure, Scald has 10 less power than Muddy Water, but a 100% accuracy and a ridiculous 30% chance to burn. And if your name is JPR, then it becomes a 100% chance to burn, making you one of the best moves in the game. Earthquake and Sludge Bomb stay the same, but Stone Edge is curiously replaced with Rock Tomb. This is definitely a power nerf, but another buff in reliability with far better accuracy and the debuff to the opponent's speed. It also now holds leftovers and is fully EV trained in HP and defense, making it very evident that this time around Gastrodon is designed to be a more tanky utility Pokemon than one that's focused on KOing you. I think this is a good change because it actually fits Gastrodon's archetype better, plus if you get burned or have your speed lowered, that's a pretty major setback when it comes to these next three Pokemon. Lucario is fourth, dropping Psychic for a Stab Flash Cannon, a pretty major upgrade if you ask me, especially in a game where Fairy types exist. Since Steel beats both Ice and Fairy, and this Lucario carries Dragon Pulse for Dragon types, this Lucario essentially becomes Garchomp's bodyguard. It also drops Earthquake for Nasty Plot, which is another serious buff. First of all, this Lucario is designed to be a special sweeper, being trained in special attack and speed, so Earthquake was already its weakest move just from that. Also, Cynthia already has two other Pokemon carrying Earthquake, and Lucario has Wise Glasses, buffing his special attack another 10%. 
This Lucario is extremely dangerous if you're not prepared, and if you let her use Nasty Plot even once, then you better be prepared for a good old-fashioned sweeping. Oh quick, here comes the Aura Sphere! Hide behind this overly large subscribe button, that'll help out! The good news is, Infernape users should be able to just outspeed and KO this thing pretty easily. Everyone else, well, you've got your work cut out for you. Milotic probably has the most insane strategy of her entire team. First of all, it will purposely burn itself by holding a flame orb so it can activate its special ability Marvel Scale, buffing its physical defense by 50%. You may think, okay, I'll just hit it with a special move then. Wrong again, eager McBeaver. Special defense is Milotic's highest stat, and this thing is fully EV trained in HP, so good luck one-shotting it. More than likely, you'll just get a face full of Milotic's Mirror Coat, nearly guaranteeing a one-shot on anything attacking it. It also replaces Aqua Ring with Recover, letting it easily heal off any damage it had to take using Mirror Coat, and it can heal off its burn damage too. Rounding out its moveset is just a solid duo of coverage moves, Scald, which we already discussed earlier, and Ice Beam, just so you Torterra users don't get too comfortable. And finally, if you even make it this far, the Big Kahuna Garchomp comes out. First and foremost, it's worth noting that unlike in the originals, Garchomp is coded to always come out last, so you can't get away with KOing it early in the fight when all your Garchomp counters are still fresh and healthy. First of all, Garchomp gets an ability change from the largely useless ability Sand Veil to a slightly better rough skin. It's not a lot, but it's a Garchomp. It doesn't really need anything better. Garchomp is also traded in its Citrus Berry for a Yachi Berry. He is very determined to not get one tapped by an Ice Beam this time. Dragon Rush gets swapped for Dragon Claw, again, not as powerful, but certainly makes up for it with reliability, which I think is more important for a sweeper like Garchomp. Brick Break gets replaced by Poison Jab, so he trades out Ice Coverage for Fairy Coverage, which is probably a decent idea, though they definitely could have just given it Iron Head instead to cover both. But maybe they even realized it might be a little too hard. And finally, probably the biggest change on her entire team, Garchomp loses its worst move, Giga Impact, for arguably its best, Swords Dance. If you see the Swords Dance come out, just go ahead and say some prayers, because now with Garchomp's other moves, it can't miss or stop to recharge. Unless you have a Weavile or a whole lot of Ice Shard, it's probably GG. So that's Cynthia's team in the first match. She is the only champion to hold items on all of her Pokemon during the initial fight, and she is one of the few with a team balanced this well. I like how you can visibly see that pretty much all the changes were made to make Garchomp as threatening as possible. By design, her team is specifically weeding out individual threats to Garchomp as the battle progresses, with more than enough coverage for Dragon, Ice, and Fairy types. It's honestly one of the smartest builds I've seen for any Pokemon NPC. I would like to take this brief intermission to go ahead and clear the air. I think now, beyond the shadow of a doubt, Cynthia is stronger than Leon. I made a somewhat controversial video last year where I said, on paper, I think Leon's team was just as good, if not better, than Cynthia's. But this Cynthia completely blows old Cynthia and Leon out of the water. It's exceptionally well built. Now again, you could argue that original Cynthia is stronger than both since there was no forced EXP share back then or affection, but those factors kind of muddy the water a bit. I'm saying strictly on paper, this is as strong as it gets. In practice? I don't know. Results may vary. Consult your doctor about your team composition, your blood pressure may rise as a side effect. And I know, Red is still out there, but we're getting to that because the rematch team is easily even more absurd. First of all, she peaks at level 88, so bare minimum, this Garchomp ties Red's Pikachu as the highest leveled Pokemon owned by any NPC. So things already aren't looking great for Red. Spirit Tomb gets Will-O-Wisp, Porygon Z replaces Rose Raid, it has crazy good coverage, Hyper Beam is a little sus, but other than that, great moveset. Togekiss comes back to replace Gastrodon, just making it fairy by default makes it better than before. And look, now it carries Serene Grace instead of Hustle, so he can just Thunder Wave and then spam Air Slash, and more than likely, you're not attacking him back. They actually switched Lucario to a physical attacker to balance the ratio of physical to special sweepers. That's a good decision. And then Milotic and Garchomp, they didn't need the change at all. They were already nearly perfect. Again, I'm a little surprised that no Iron Head on Garchomp. I can understand why it wasn't there before, but in the rematch, I think it's fair game. Guys, this is easily better than Heart Gold and Soul Silver Red. First of all, he doesn't even hold items other than Light Ball. Before we even make comparisons, he doesn't even hold items. 
He's got recharge moves on four of his Pokemon, so you'll probably have a lot of free turns to heal. His best Pokemon is Pikachu, which he leads with and can easily be countered with almost any ground type. Again, I think the only argument you could make is that affection might give you a bigger helping hand against Cynthia. But that's literally the only thing. I think Cynthia's team composition is better in every possible way. Is she the strongest Pokemon NPC ever? Well, maybe, at least outside of the battle facilities. But as far as the main story goes, yes, absolutely. Well done, Ilka. You created a monster to haunt another generation of kids for years to come. I applaud you for your efforts. Anyhow, assuming that you're not completely terrified of this battle now, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you guys next time.